Welcome back to another Gen Pool Spotlight where we dive into what's happening in the world of EOS, EOS IO, um, everything that we're involved with over here at Gen or EOS. Um, if you happen to be catching this live, uh, please like and share it out um, because I think this is a pretty good one. It's going to be kind of a, you know, shoot the shit, uh, get to know what's going on with uh, John Williamson, who you probably know um, quite a bit about if you're following the EOS space. Um, from Violet Garden, uh, did quite well in the last Eden on EOS elections and is sitting on that committee. Um, recently became public knowledge that you'll be working with Fractally uh, uh, alongside Dan. Um, there's tons of stuff going on in the space, you know, even beyond you, uh, things happening with Evil Rose and the e ENF and, and Grants and Palmelo season two is coming up. Like, like we just, it, it's, it's crazy to think that when I first found EOS and got started with it at the very beginning, it went to where it went and now it's back here again, like more bullish than ever in a way. So, so thanks for joining us, John. And uh, yeah, welcome to another uh, e Gen Pool Spotlight. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. So what's most exciting for you right now? Like, I know that there's tons going on in your life, but what are you <laughs> most excited about? Uh, uh, yeah, I think just the, the build up of momentum that we've got um actually hasn't the enf now just uh, said that they've recruited the block one ceo um ceo uh, i forget his name but uh you've got that and again fractally is getting more and more talent we've just uh, taken on james mart uh so he's uh he, he looks very promising uh, as well i'm sure he bring a lot to the team and so uh yeah it looks like tons of talent uh going into into eos but uh particularly in, in, in fractally as well so we'll be able to bring some really cool stuff yeah i mean it's interesting to me because we um i <laughs> uh, gotta be careful here it's interesting to me because we, when we see like i i uh a parent company or controlling company divesting, um, you know, from the community. And then the community has to come in and kind of like pick up the shambles uh, um, and, and pieces that are revolving around that. It's interesting to see how this plays out. Right. So like, I mean, of course, Eve kind of went his own way um, mm -hmm. after he stepped down from, from EOS nation um, and, and brought about, you know, kind of the rejuvenation through the ENF. But like when I got wind of that message um, that <laughs> Dan is basically recruiting everyone that like, can I say block one silenced in a way? Like I think that's kind of what 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 what's what's happening here, um, and and we haven't really heard much from block one, but uh, the community is just you know raring and ready to go. Like there's so much going on um, with, with with like so many things and all the funding options, and I think seventy seven percent more for this Pomelo matching. Like that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like it was pretty good before, right? Um, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Uh, the the additional funds to the Pamela, I think, would be fantastic as well. Make uh, more things happen, and uh, yeah, bootstrap more projects. So the other thing that I'm quite, quite bullish on as well is there's a lot of um, beyond EOS working groups that are kind of happening now, right? Like there's a lot of things that like are bringing a lot of chains together and stuff like that. So I kind of want to dive into to to to, to Violet um, Garden for a minute because the last time we talked about it. Um, we were uh, tossing around ideas about like where it was headed and where it was going. And I just like to get a bit of an update on that um, because, you know, what you guys are using for the ability to be able to post and keep the community informed um, really is the Eden on EOS membership. So for people who might not know what Violet Garden is, um, can you just maybe give them a little bit of a heads up and, and how it um, how it solves a lot of problems that other social media platforms on blockchain uh, had or have? Yep. Uh, so yeah, Violet Garden is a social media uh, site and it uh, basically requires that you're a member of uh, Eden on EOS to, to use it. And by doing that, we can verify that every account on there is unique. And then we're, from there, we give out free uh, 50 bio tokens uh, per day and uh, users can post and uh, bid on each other's posts. Uh, and every time there's a bid, there's a uh, opportunity to make some profit uh, simply by getting outbid, but also being the, the author as well. So there's a lot of... Uh, ideas that you can add uh to, to social media with, with blockchain and sort of tokenomics around that and uh and you know plenty more from from dan to, to add in there so all the things uh that you know dan had all the sort of visions that dan had for for, for voice i tried you know fulfilling in uh in, in violet garden 
And so now where the, the, the next level of that is, is going to be brought into to fractally. Sorry, I had myself muted there. So I, I just actually love this because, you know, this is a really good thing to remember. I remember Reed Hoffman quote, if you're not embarrassed by the first version of your product, um, you've launched, well, what? Um, and, and it's interesting to see how, for me, uh, things are evolving, right? Like, so Dan took a lot of flack. Um, I mean, I give him a little bit of flack, I'll be honest about it. Um, <laughs> as a writer, um, how he kind of resigned from block one. And, and I, I, I wrote a piece back in the day where, where I talked about this and, and I said, this could go one of, one of two ways, right? Now either, um, because he kind of resigned over on Hive and I thought that was a little bit weird. Like, why wouldn't you resign in the EOS community as opposed to on another blockchain? And, and, and you know, I've interviewed Dan and I've always had a good time talking to him. So I'm not throwing shade anymore, but like in my piece, I, I said this could go one of two ways, right? Um, he, he could be leaving and he could do great things for the community again. Um, you know, part of the reason maybe he's leaving is because he's handcuffed. Um, or, um, you know, he could just be, doing the worst of what all of these other people are proposing and uh, just running away again. But what's interesting is what you guys are working on over there with Fractally, this is this is kind of um, all of these kind of visions and ideas that Dan had, version one, all kind of tied together uh, to, to kind of create the concept. And, and I think that's something that's important to understand, right? You have Steemit, you have Voice, um, of course, you, you're no stranger to social platforms as well with Violet Garden. Um, you've got the Eden on EOS concepts, the governance concepts. You've got what, what he was working on with, with, with BitShares and Clarion over there, um, kind of all coming into this, this meld with Fractally. And I think like the broader community, even beyond EOS, is starting to recognize that he's not like a, um, you know, he's not the type of person to just like, you know, bat the ball out and then walk off the plate. Right. Like, like he's up here, he's swinging, he's missing, but it's all kind of coming together uh, through the point of his grand vision. Now, yeah. what I want to ask is everyone in the ES community is super excited. Right. What's your take on what's happening beyond EOS, right? Because now we're starting to tie these other EOS IO blockchains back into it. Right. Um, and I mean, what are our odds going up against Ethereum? What I, the complete speculation, by the way, what are our odds going up against, you know, Solana, which is yeah. amazing blockchain, which can't even keep running for, you know, three weeks without <laughs> being interrupted. Right. We, 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 we can throw shade too, but like, yeah, what, what, what's your take on all this, John? Yeah. Well, um, I think, you know, DeFi was, you know, a, a, a big thing, a lot of hype around that, you know, ICOs and, and stuff like that. So sort of blockchains revolutionized how we, you know, raise raise funds and, and where we allocate funds, uh, you know, yield farming and stuff like that. Uh, now you've got the sort of NFT craze uh, as, as well. And um, while a lot of it's sort of just bent on art and a few novelty things, there's still tons of use case applications for NFTs that, you know, would be great, you know, like your, your airline tickets and, uh just ran, random things that you buy you could probably get an nft when you buy a coffee uh one day as well or you know buy a meal uh, all that uh and so i think the next the big thing would be governance um because we need we, we need good governance the amount of you know well there's so much talent in the blockchain space and so many of it uh is going their, their own directions uh it's, it's 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 not that we work together it's it's more that we you know we've gone off and, and made our own tribes so you've got the Cardano guys, you've got the, the, the EOS guys, the Ethereum guys, mm -hmm. and how many more you know, blockchains are out there, right? And they're all going their own directions. And I think uh, what really excites me about Fractally is, you know, Fractally allows, again, I don't want to say too much, like, <laughs> but, but it, it, it allows people to work together, uh, you know, much better. And, 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 and it creates new, new methods of sort of mapping out incentives uh, that, uh, I think is, is is really cool and it will accelerate um yeah the, the development of things and and really light uh, a, a fire uh on, under people to, to to get stuff done and ask and make, and make people question hey how can we work together on this rather than how hey how can we you know compete against each other you know how can we both win rather than just you know uh, you know you win i lose sort of thing uh, so yeah yeah and i think 
It's interesting when we think about it, because like so many people are, how do I say this nicely, vested in their own self interest that it's in a way holding a blockchain as a whole back, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, 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 and it, yeah, because money gets involved, I think it creates a sort of sense of, you know, tribalism. Uh, we, you know, we, you know, programmers don't get this passionate about, you know, other network protocols like HTTP and stuff like that. You know, there's yeah. that <laughs> passion around, you know, FTP and things like that. But, you know, when money gets involved and, you know, uh, things, things go crazy. But I, I think, and then, and again, I think, um, Blockchain is very much appealed to people where they're very much on the coder's law train. They're, you know, very much into a world, the idea where there is no governance. It's just, you know, code that takes care of it. And we don't have to rely on people to, to govern. Uh, but I think more and more people sort of opening their eyes and realizing that, hey, that's not good enough because code does go wrong. Things do get hacked. We need to be a bit more flexible when we're creating this because we just cannot expect, you know, mainstream adoption of blockchain. If, you know, you live in a world where, the deeds to your house go on blockchain but then if you get hacked then you know suddenly you no longer own your family house and, and you get kicked out you know the next day just people aren't going to accept that kind of thing right. uh you know as, as much of other people are willing to accept that and very much adamant on coders law and even ethereum people say that they're about coders law but they're still an ethereum and not ethereum classic right because you know uh <laughs> if you're a fan of you know uh coders law then you know what why is um you know ethereum classic and ethereum uh, you know still a thing so even uh, i think the majority of ethereum people uh might say they're into coders law but yeah when when all that money gets lost in, in in a DAO hack suddenly they change their tune so we need to be in a better position so when things like you know these events do happen we do have governance you know processes in place to you know cushion the fall figure out what to do and, and, and move on rather than be so catastrophic and create a whole new bloody blockchain. Like we can't just do that and expect to have, you know, a sense of unity at the same time. Well, and there's a couple of conflicting interests that have got us all kind of wrapped up in the middle of this pool with no ladder out, right? Like, so, so you have these, these massive corporations that are trying to play by the rule book and, and not, yeah. you know, end up getting arrested by Washington. And you have these other massive corporations that know that they can just come into this uh, space and um, get up to whatever, um, well, let's just say it, Tom fuckery that they want. And uh, nobody, n nobody really is, is holding them accountable. Right. And, and so, What's interesting is that we do have this uh, scenario where everything is recorded on chain yep. and everything is there and public perception can make or break us, right? And what happened in the early days of EOS, I think, was that a lot of people who, you know, came in here uh, yelling about things, um, probably aren't doing themselves any favors because look at what happened with that last ma major hack um, that was basically the impetus for, for Eve, Eve, Eve stepping down and mm -hmm. all of those funds that would have been lost. Almost no other blockchain in the world could have mm. prevented that. And that's yeah. what the legacy system needs to move into this. Because like you're saying, right, like we, we, we come out here all high and noble and say, well, look, like uh, we, um, yeah, we really want to put land rights in the third world uh, on the blockchain so that like when there's a military queue and people come back, we, we know that it's there. But like, yes. yeah, I mean, what happens exactly when, when, when they hack your computer <laughs> and they steal your land rights, right? Like there, there's got to be some kind of happy medium. So I like I'm all for the noise, but I'm also uh, very... Um, very into Dan's idea about governance, right? Because that's kind of what he's working on now is is, is figuring out a way uh, to synthesize that that human understanding and that human need to be um, what's the word I'm looking for to to to, to be like responsible for your own choices right yep. um right we, we, like we're not looking to be an ai it's a one thing uh, solves all but then you have all of these people who are in here who are speculating who are doing various things and this is kind of where um you know eden on eos comes in because now you mm -hmm. have the people who have this voice who have the ability to do it and what i especially like about eden on eos is uh the last rendition actually where, where you kind of became like you know one of the the key uh members of uh you know, making it to the very top. Now we've got four or five different uh, 
people who are looking at different things, who are trying to implement these things. And uh, you guys are giving, you know, updates, you're, you're putting your faces out there, you're putting everything on the line. I mean, yeah. and I think that's really important. There are blockchains out there where we still don't know the founding teams because they refuse to come on camera. Now, I mean, I don't know. I'm not calling them out and saying you need to be on camera, but in the world that I live in, I want to put a face to the name. And if you don't have a face to your name and you're not out there, then I almost don't even want to support you at this point, right? Because I think that that's part of what transparency is, right? Like we, we, we part of the reason that we're trying to get away from this is so that we can have everything on chain, so that we can have everything locked up, so that we can see uh, where every transaction went and what every transaction did. Um, but one of our biggest problems with governance in the real world is we always say uh, that people are, you know, pulling strings behind uh, the politicians that are out there on the front lines. And yeah. so I think maybe Eden kind of solves this. So sorry, that was my little rant. Um, just go with that wherever you want, actually, now. But like, <laughs> yeah, no, fant fantastic points. Uh, it all makes sense. And yeah, and I hope we can uh, imp improve on that with, with, with Fractally and, and how governance is, is, is done and, and how you know, people are elected and who should be at the top, uh, you know, who's, who's best qualified you know, for those powers. And, and all the other questions that go along with it. Yeah, so I know that you're not really able to talk about what's going on directly with Fractally yet, mm -hmm. but uh, I would like to dive into um, you know what what you guys have as kind of like the broader vision. Like what, what once we bring all of these things together, the social side, the governance side, um, and uh, you know the sorry i lost that the social side the governance side and the blockchain aspects what's what's the end game plan for what uh fractally will be able to give to the community um what what what's it what's it going to stand for what what's what's going to be the you know the thing that we're going to be out, able to go out there and say to all of the other blockchains look we have this where the fuck is your version of it <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah yeah so um yeah, I, I think a lot of the the crypto you know blockchain community are again in, in in the fantasy that you know we don't need to worry about governance. We can co code our way of the problem. You know, so long as we write the perfect code, the perfect smart contract to you know take care of X Y Z, uh, and 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 yeah, and a lot of the community they they bond over the you know the token price of of their blockchain, um, and. <laughs> in one way the worst thing a blockchain can do is actually go to production eh? like you know people are, are looking for the, the next wave you know the the next thing that's that's, that's going to go up so you know sometimes it's it's better to never go in production and just forever be in the state of it's going to be this it's going to do that and it's going to have this and just you know pr produce all that hype and in, 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 in there um so yeah, like well, we can go off. You know what what Dan said before. Again, you know Dan said you know Fractal is going to be like a, a, a DAO, a DAO. So it's gonna yeah be able to you know link sort of different communities, you know decentralized autonomous you know communities or organizations, and uh, and and sort of map relationships b b between them, uh, which is, which is again incentivizing working you know together. So you know if if one DAO is you know successful, then then you know that can mean another DAO you know benefits from from that as well. Uh, there, so yeah, again, that's what's what my favorite thing about it is, is is that it eliminates this kind of you know war, you know if where you know if Solana is successful that must mean that you know EOS is is doing badly or you know as one project is good then you know the others you know taking a toll um and and then again you know it also holds the values of you know more equal animals where you know in Dan um in the book you know Dan iterates that uh that again independence and and the the ability to secede is 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 important uh and so things like that have been you know thought of and um take into account and in, in, in Dan's mind as he, you know, designs, you know, fractally as well. So those, those values would be um, part of the, the, the fractally DNA uh, I, I'd say, which is fantastic because there's a lot of fake DAOs out there as well, eh? where like there's a lot of, a lot of DAOs where it's just an exit strategy for a lot of, you know, programs right where the founders like yeah you know we're gonna have full control of the project to, to get off the ground we're gonna raise the funds 
And then, you know, in order to get rid of it and, you know, get off our place, we're going to turn it into a DAO. And then once there's a DAO, it's no longer our problem. And then they walk away. <laughs> Jeez, uh, dude, Sorry. you're really getting me into trouble here on this one. But yeah, like I've, <laughs> I, I, I've sat on some DAX and DAOs that have been uh, less than promising. And one of the projects that I'm working with right now, um, let's just say we're, we're headed in the other way because we're trying to we're trying to turn it into a DAO. Uh, for the simple reason that that's the only option that we have. Um, and, and, and I mean, I, there's a little bit of criticism that it might not even be a full DAO, but like you, you can't just necessarily run things for free, uh, you know, across the board. And I think that there's a lot of DAOs that have these, uh, quote unquote, um, grand visions that, uh, are susceptible to only the people who are working on the inside. And, Mm -hmm. um, it's just another form of, of centralized control. And, and to even showcase something that isn't is really difficult because like what you said, there's two sides to this, right? Like if we look at back even in the early days of, of, of um, EOS DAOs, which, which was, were really promising, um, you have to find that balance between centralized control and just turning the whole thing over to the community, right? Because if you turn the whole thing over to the community, I mean, there's a chance that like somebody could come in and collude and, and suck the project dry, right? Yep. Uh, however, if you maintain too much control, then uh, there's a chance that people are going to uh, be really pissed off and upset. So I think what I actually like about um, Eden on EOS is in a way, uh, there's some really interesting you know, models behind uh, being a DAO. But the, the final kind of thing is like, okay, these are your four options. And the person who gets the most amount of funds is randomly chosen from this pool. And Mm -hmm. that actually seems to um, solve a lot of problems that I think DAOs get or DAOs have, which, which I'm pretty excited about it. So, I mean, you guys, so you guys still meet, right? Like I think it's once every month and, and, and and you talk. Uh, Yeah. Chief chief delegate meetings every, every week. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I, I'm a little bit behind the scenes on that. So, so, so for, again, uh, what do you guys, for, for people who uh, might not tune into this, what do you guys uh, talk about and why is it important that people are paying attention that they're not just going in there, they're not just voting because uh, you have to be a part of it to be able to vote. They're not just going and voting and walking away. What's the important thing about the chief delegate uh, meeting aspect and why should people be uh, paying attention to this? <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, yeah, each week we'll meet up and bare minimum we'll uh, discuss what we've been up to for that week, you know, what kind of value have we brought to the community. Um, lately, I haven't said too much because the majority of the stuff that I'm doing is, you know, for fractally, so, and, you know, private information is yet to be, uh, you know, public. But um, yeah, so but bare minimum we'll do that uh, and then we'll address any concerns that, you know, the community might have or, you know, if there's been any dramas uh, Eva's made an announcement or, you know, whatever it might be, we'll uh, discuss that. Uh, we have somewhat been throttled um, by, I guess, you know, the lack of bylaws. Um, so, but, you know, we're, we're still questioning ourselves, like, what exactly is the, the goal of, you know, eating on, on, on EOS? And again, that is not a um, so much a negative reflection of, of Eden, like the, the, the process is, is, is still, you know, pre- pretty awesome. It's just, you know, what this particular instance of the Eden framework, you know, uh, is, is, is meant to do, or, you know, what, what can we do? And then again, how does this, you know, compare to, you know, fractally, uh, and, you know, should it upgrade or, uh, yeah, which is again, a hard question to answer because no one really knows what fractally is yet. I'm still fractally because, you know, it, it, it does change, you know, often there's constantly new ideas being thrown around in the team. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's that, but, uh, yeah, I really like how, again, with the Eden on EOS system again, yeah, you, you, you get, everyone gets to be in the election. Everyone gets to have their voice heard, you know, you, you have a significant amount of weight, you know, in, in the round that, that you're in, uh, cause you know, you have to reach a consensus of, you know, two thirds plus one, I believe, uh, still. So. You know, should that fail, like that makes massive impacts. You know, I think Chris in his particular round, he only just got through with like five seconds spare on the clock. So, you know, if if one one person more didn't want him there or you know wasn't happy with him, like you know, he, 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 he could have been out. So, it's uh, uh, yeah, amazing how much power is 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 given. And again, it, it is public knowledge that um, practically we have you know weekly weekly calls. Uh, so again. 
that situation where you actually have to get on camera, you know, prove that you're human and then communicate with other, you know, team members, you know, I think that's invaluable. Like how many other DAOs do that, eh? Where you're forced to get on camera and, and, and talk rather than just be a, a faceless, you know, Ethereum address, you know, behind it. And, you know, that's it. No one really knows who you are. And, uh, and yeah, so I think that alone for governance and, you know, proving who you are and you know you can't just make a you know, new fake account and assume another identity like you're you're, you're forced to be vulnerable uh in, in that kind of sense and i think that's uh very powerful yeah and i mean even even when people uh know who you are and your face is out there you're you're more apt to I mean, there's a lot of people who are part of Eden, but they still don't show their faces on a regular basis. And it's really easy in this day and age for us to be able to hide behind that social presence of, of you know, Facebook and, and creating these profiles that we want people to believe in. And um, I think it, it, it really it really goes to show the motivation and ambition of the people who are out there on the front lines to actually be able to put their face on something. Right. Like like and like. I, I think most of us who are, who are in this space who are doing things like we do actually give ourselves the, the permission to fail, right? Like like going back to that <laughs> previous quote, right? Like you have to. If you're not going to fail, then you're not going to make things better, right? Yeah. Um, and and so like it's just really interesting for me to watch this all come about. And like you said, we can't really know that much about it, right? But like my my suspicion, and I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is that my suspicion is fractally was never intended to um, you know uh, replace um steam it or 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 bit um bit shares or or eden on eo so it, it's more uh meant to uh you know be this principle that incorporates all of them into a grander vision they'll still uh all run independently of one another uh, however all of that like we could think of it almost as like a, a humanized um you know, a, a humanized oracle in a way to feed all of that information <laughs> to where right. it needs to go to 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 not like direct all of the other parts, but to influence the other parts and, and how they work together. Right. And and I think we've seen that from a variety of projects um, over the last you know few months, w whether it's the ENF, um, whether it's uh, what's going on in Eden and 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 uh, even Violet Garden, uh, I guess, uh, to a certain extent, um, allowing people to come in and, and make those posts and, and bid on those posts. So um, speaking of Violet Garden, one other thing I wanted to ask you was um, I, I wanted if, if we could, because I know you're quite busy, but I know you got a team working uh, a little bit with you, even, even though it's a small team. Um, so uh, you um, actually through Pomelo and through Eden, um, you're working on uh, updating uh, what you guys are doing over there at Violet Garden. And um, I'm just wondering if we could have like a little quick uh, recap on what you guys have done over the last couple months and, and what you guys have planned uh, in, into the next little bit. Um. <clears throat> yep, yep. So uh, yeah, what we've done is uh, we implemented uh, NFTs uh, since, since then. Um, did, a, did, did a bit more polish ar around that. Uh, but after that, really, it's just been, you know, answering the question, hey, you know, what does Fr the Violet Garden, you know, look like, you know, being morphed into, you know, fr fractally, uh, what, what role does it play? Where, where is it best, uh, you know, suited in, and what does that look like? So uh, th there isn't anything sort of set concrete uh, at, the, at the moment. Uh, the, the white paper will elaborate more on that. Uh, but yeah yeah i'm just excited for when i get to go back and edit my post because i always forget to put the cover image at the top and it's like damn it gotcha. but i mean it's tough right like because we're used to being able to uh, edit and say and change whatever we want to say right and and so now you actually have to be sure like if you're rushed and, and you do something um you know you have to <laughs> it could be out there forever right you can't just go back and like change your posts and delete your telegram messages and edit things and you know change your account ids um when you're like you said putting a face to a name whether it's through socials whether it's through blockchain whether it's through DeFi, whether it's through finance um the game becomes real and uh, you really need to um again it, you really need to make sure um that you're crossing all your t's and dotting all your i's and and we're not quite there yet um but honestly i don't know of any thing that's come closer to potentially 
disrupting the accountability of modern day business than what you guys are creating over there. And th that for me is huge, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. Uh, the things that we're mixing together as well, you know, social plus the, you know, the sort of work elements uh, and, you know, the, the weekly meetings, uh, that's, that's, that's very powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I, yeah, I don't see that in DAOs. And of course, you know, you, you'll see it in, in companies, but again, that they're, they're private, that they're, they're not as transparent, mm -hmm. they're not as you know, open to just anyone, you know, contributing. Uh, so yeah, it's, 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 in its own league, uh, as, as, as far as I know. Uh, and, and again, we've got, you know, all of Dan's experience again, you know, Dan's made bit, you know, bit shares, made mistakes, you know, and, 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 and learn for those same thing with, you know, steam and, and, and now hive. So he's just got like, you know, only Dan, you know, how, how many people will have those experiences that, that Dan has, like, is, is there any other developers that have made a blockchain, you know, around DeFi, another blockchain around social, <laughs> and have now sort of taking, you know, lessons that he's learned and put into that, like, you know, uh, I don't know anyone. So, like, yes, this is such unique, you know, insights. Um, and, and again, the Fractally team, uh, again, I'm not speaking on their behalf or anything, but, you know, I, I would, you know, say that we're, we're excited to, to fulfill that, to, to implement that and, you know, and, 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 and do the sort of, you know, um, learn more from from, from what we're you know, building and and uh Im improve on on dan's ideas and yeah make make well, them come to come to life well and it's nice to see the shit kicking that he took well under you know the handcuffs of block one not being able to say anything not being able to yeah. impart his vision not being able to do anything um is is now kind of being rectified through his actions right and i think that's that's all we can hope for in this space is is for people to look at our actions and um you know make a judgment call on that right um because yeah. i think it's quite you know quite telling um <laughs> right like and i'm not knocking a person like vitala buterin i mean that guy is like a superstar right like he's out there he's grinding he's doing these things um you know even some of the people that are that are are standing there um you know as headliners for their own blockchains but dan is up there as one of them and uh one of the things i like about dan is like you said he it kind of screwed him maybe in, in the early days because he had a hand in all of these little different pies. But now when we see all of this kind of starting to coalesce and, and come together uh, mm -hmm. under what the, what the EOS ecosystem and, and the broader EOS IO ecosystem is, is great. So, um, but yeah, I think I will wrap this up because, um, you know, it's good to have like, uh, you know, little mini quick updates. But like before we go, I just want to ask because uh, Pomelo uh, season two, um is is up and coming uh the eden on uh eos elections will, will, will be coming uh, around again so i'm just kind of curious are, are you guys um are you guys going to be putting in another proposal for pomelo or are you going to be running uh on 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 the same uh platform uh or maybe you don't even know yet uh for eden on eos um give us an update of uh, john williamson the person um not necessarily the the, the projects that you're involved with <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think uh, Violet Garden would have, you know, morphed into into, into fractally, uh, but by then, so unlikely that Violet Garden would be part of Pamela or uh, anything like that. Uh, for the Eden uh, elections, um, I think yeah, Eden is kind of stunted uh, at the at the moment, and I feel it'd be best, you know, uh, you know, morph, morphing in and, and upgrading to you know fractally. So uh, if, if I do run, it will likely to be such sort of, you know, nurse that through uh, in, 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 interfractally and, uh, you know, create the best, uh, put it in the best position that, that, that we can as, as, as a new DAO with a, a, new, a new sort of system. Uh, yeah. So yeah, Fractal is the focus. Uh, where can people learn more? Where can people get more engaged? Obviously, you need to uh, follow at Viola on on Twitter, uh, follow Dan on Twitter, um, uh, probably a, a bunch of other people. But is there anywhere else that people should be plugged into to get the most up to date information on what you guys have got coming? Yeah, I think uh, fractally.com, the website, uh, will will we'll probably you know list all all the future updates. Dan's uh, Medium. Uh, and then, of course, yeah, uh, stay tuned for the uh, 22nd day of uh, th this month, for the 22nd hour, 22nd minute, 22nd second, uh, second uh, UTC for the release of the white paper. And then that's when you really get the uh, into, into the meat of it. 
uh, and, and, and learn all about, you know, fractally, what, what it's about, where it's going. And uh, yeah, that'd be, that'd be great. I might actually uh, have a meeting with the chief delegates, uh, particularly for the release of that white paper. And we might openly discuss it as well uh, and get the current chief delegates, you know, thoughts on uh, fractally too. And uh, because I already, you know, read the white paper, then uh, maybe instruct them as well and, you know, help, help, help uh, them through the white paper. So people, the, the public would be able to learn uh, about fractally uh, as the chief delegates uh, are perhaps. Great. Yeah. Thanks very much. And thanks for joining us. And, um, you know, if you guys have any questions, uh, definitely shoot them to where they need to go um, uh, under any of these kind of umbrellas, because uh, I, I, at least my experience with John has always been uh, very forthcoming and opening. And, and um, you know, when he doesn't get lost in a tidal uh, storm of um, <laughs> crazy TMs, he's always really good at, at reaching out and keeping us uh, informed. So, yeah, thanks so much for joining us, John. And I, I hope to have you back you know maybe after the white paper and we can dive into the details a little bit more definitely yeah sounds sounds good thanks a lot for having me thank you and uh to all of you who tuned in thank you very much please like and share this out and uh yeah support us uh in any way that you can um not just gender eos not just fractally not just violet garden but basically eos as a whole because uh, we're on the verge of uh, something amazing and i really do think that uh Dan's not out of line in thinking that he can change the world. All we have to do is get people to freaking listen. That's it.